Hi everyone, welcome back to Stay in Your Lane, presented by Triple T Transport. Today we've got uh, Dan North coming back, uh, going to sit down with us. Dan is a senior economist for Allianz Trade North America. Dan's value to the to the podcast and the viewers is uh, his ability to understand what's going on in the economy. Dan, how many years now? Is it 27? Gosh, I think that's right, yeah. 27 years he's been uh, chief of senior economist for Allianz Trade. We very much appreciate your insight. So um, last we spoke, you know, we were we were starting to enter into recession, and you had projected it would be second and third quarter. We would feel it. So uh, at this time, I'd love it if you'd share with us what you're seeing. Sure. Um, so I kind of want to start off <clears throat> with the very fundamental principles of macroeconomics, which is prices and output. Now, let's say, for instance, the you think of the economy as a factory, one big factory. You know, what's the price of the widgets that you're producing and how many widgets are you producing every month or every year? Or in trucking, it's uh, how much are you hauling every month and at what rate? Those are the two very fundamental measures in the economy. So let's start off by looking at prices. Now, this morning we had uh, the Consumer Price Index report. It's kind of what I call, that's the headline. Uh, it's the most commonly watched measure of inflation or prices. And last June, it set a 40-year high of 9.1%, a 40-year high. This morning, it came in at 3.2%. So it's come down very dramatically over, uh, over the past year. Now, there's a, a subset of the CPI, which is what we call core inflation. Core inflation strips out energy prices and food prices because they're so volatile strip them out and you get a more steady measure of underlying inflation called the core. And that peaked last March at six and a half percent, another 40 year record. And now it's down to 4.7 percent. So it has come down as well. And both measures continue to go down. This is largely because of the Federal Reserve's actions of raising interest rates to slow the economy and cool inflation, and it works. Um, it's, it's made a lot of progress. The, it's gonna get a little bit slower and a little bit tougher now because of what we call uh, base effects. And basically it means you can take a big chunk out of things if it's big versus uh, a small chunk. In other words, you know, a better example might be you can take a big bite out of a Big Mac, but you can't out of a little tiny tea sandwich. So we're heading towards the tea sandwich. And, and that just means that the rate of inflation, the slowdown is not going to come as rapidly. But we've made a lot of headway and we're getting down towards that 2% target the Federal Reserve wants. A ways to go yet. It's important to remember that it takes three to five quarters, not weeks or months, but three to five quarters for monetary policy changes to have full effect. That is um, raising interest rates. So for instance, the first hike uh, was last year in March of 2022. Okay, it's three to five quarters. You could say, sure, that's, that's had its full effect. And the one after that as well, and the one after that as well. Um, but, you know, all the way up into September 22. But hikes in December, hikes in November of 2022, December of 2020, January, March, and May of this year, they haven't had full effect yet. It takes three to five quarters. So the point is, a lot of arrows have been shot at the inflation beast. Not all of them have even gotten there yet. So we continue to uh, believe that inflation will, will go down because these actions by the Federal Reserve do in fact work. Now, these interest rate hikes not only hit inflation, but they hit the overall economy, the output side of the economy, and it's done a fair amount of damage there. For instance, uh, the housing market, even though it's recovering, 
was really hit hard. Mortgages are at 7%. Manufacturing is in recession. Uh, and consumption is slowing. Uh, even the labor market is weakening. Now, every month we get the big employment report and it continues to show big numbers, you know, a couple hundred thousand um, every, you know, every month, but it is slowing. And this is what you see as you start to approach a recession. You can still create jobs right up until the month of the recession. It's it's the last pillar in the economy to fall because no one wants to lay anybody off until they really have to. So it's not surprising that we're seeing still on that measure of the economy, labor on the surface still looking good. But underneath, there are a lot of indicators that say, yeah, there's really some weakness here. You know, on a year-over-year -year basis, the rate of job creation is falling. Um, there are a number of other measures, weekly jobless claims, this consumer confidence, um, job differential measure, uh, a number of other measures that are showing weakness in the labor market. So the point is, the arrows have been shot. They're having their effect on inflation, still will going forward. And they've also had the effect on the output side including the labor market. So those are the two basic measures that you see in the economy. And as I'd mentioned, you know, we still have the full effects yet to be felt. So we expect to see the economy continue to slow along with prices, along with inflation. Now we talked about having a recession in the second or third quarter that's been pushed back a little bit. Um, we now think that we're likely to have a negative quarter, uh, maybe in the fourth quarter of this year, followed by something like 0%. It's right skating around recession in the U.S. So it's a slightly milder forecast than it was last time, but we certainly see a lot of evidence of a slowdown coming. Well, let me interrupt you here because I think that's, um, first off, thank you. Uh, I understood, and I think a lot of our listeners will understand, what you, picture you're painting for where we are as we navigate this. Now, when you said uh, the core inflation strips out um, uh, food and energy, right? those are probably our two highest impacts. It, it, you know, everyone's got to eat. Yeah. Everyone's got to heat their home in the winter time or run an AC unit in the summer and if they you know if they have the ability and, and what we're seeing because our clientele here is is I would say predominantly food and beverage uh, as a, as a uh, if we slice up everything we do we do some building materials and have for many years so we we see the economies impact in the building industry a lot. Uh, we do our refrigerated and frozen everything from novelty ice creams to frozen foods to dairy to to you name it and then we do manufactured uh, products that are you know dry that are not refrigerated that are shelf stable you know we do all this type of business mm -hmm. um, and then we do some we do our produce clients we handle the, the agricultural stuff, so we see the impact there in the economy. I think that the job growth picture has been post-COVID somewhat skewed because uh, uh, what we're seeing, retail restaurant business has never made it back to pre-COVID levels. That's right. And, and I don't think it will anytime soon because people learned a different lifestyle through covid they went back to eating at home. It changed a lot of behaviors. Right. So uh, we saw the e-com business explode because we do a lot of, you know, e-com business and uh, short lead, you know, high visibility, last mile delivery um, that is intricate and has to happen. So what we're seeing in our market matches everything that you're sharing with us, but we're seeing the, the food and energy sector 
um, volume down. Uh, people, the, the buyers have been buying down at the grocery because we have to. Right. We have less money to work with. It doesn't go as far. You're getting necessities and buying cheaper items. You're buying down. Uh, that's what we're seeing. How, how does that impact what you see? Because when you strip out those things and you show the, the real picture of where the economy is, I think the housing market's going to continue to struggle navigating with the high interest rates. But I still think there's, in most good cities or desirable cities, there's still people that are looking for housing. But we're seeing a lot of apartments being built now that weren't mm-hmm. built before. A lot of studios, lifestyle changes. And how do, how do you see that navigating you know, the, the economic picture for you? Let me start by talking, going back to talking about prices. There are many different measures of inflation. There's the headline consumer price uh, index we had this morning, along with the core CPI. We'll get the same thing tomorrow on the wholesale level, what they call producer prices, and that's what producers of goods and of uh, goods and services are, are getting for their products as opposed to what consumers are paying. It's on the wholesale level. Okay. Um, uh, interest rates are a price. It's a price of money. Wages are a price. And then there are housing prices as well. So the Federal Reserve looks at all these. But it does, you, know, you make a very good point about the core rate of inflation. But the core does strip out uh, food and energy. Why do they do that? Because... The Federal Reserve can't really influence food prices so much. For instance, you know, we had the avian flu. Um, Egg prices went through the roof earlier this year. You know, you get uh, a bad wheat crop or a bad corn crop because of weather. Well, the Federal Reserve doesn't have much influence over that. Similarly, in energy, you know, that's uh, variable because Saudi Arabia and Russia might get together and say, hey, let's constrict supply and and uh, um, raise prices, or you know, we might loosen up restrictions here and find a whole new set uh, of uh, a wells that could produce oil and gas, or somebody says something wrong in the Middle East, or a pipeline burst somewhere. These all affect the uh, price of energy. So does weather affect the price of energy. Those are really hard for the Federal Reserve to influence. So that's why they look at the core. But they don't ignore the fact that consumers are, are, have been suffering. And it's really interesting to think about the fact that inflation is cumulative. In other words, you're paying more money for a widget today than you did yesterday. And that price was built on the month before. The month before, it's, it builds up. It's cumulative. Right, right. And if you compare that to wages, uh, inflation since, I, I don't know, since 2021 or up 17%. And um, wages are up something like 4 or 5% less than that. So wage earners over the past couple of years are still underwater. And that's why you still have uh, sticker shock when you go to buy things. You continue to have sticker shock because of that cumulative effect. Um, So that's a long way of saying the Federal Reserve does look at those food and energy prices, but the core is is more important in the sense that that is what they can control. Continue watching on the next episode of the Stay in Your Lane podcast.